Welcome to the final in my series in which I'm exploring Corora. This time around, we're taking a look at Corora um, 22 XFCE. As you can see, it has the um, crazy background that all of them except GNOME 3 have. And here it goes loading up. Um, so this is a shot I took at the Grand Canyon. It's not the default background. The default background looks kind of like the background for a GDM or STDM or whatever they're using for the login. Now, uh, what's interesting here is they have this pop-up menu, which basically ends up functionally the same as the one they have in um, GNOME with some slightly different um, programs chosen for the defaults. Uh, now, throughout all my 13 or so years um, with Linux, I've basically had a time period where I've had uh, a, each of the desktop environments be my favorite, essentially. Um, so um, I've had um, GNOME be my favorite. I talked about that before. Currently, KDE is my favorite. At one point in the past, um, I really, really liked XFCE. And um, part of it was I had a computer that was um, beefy enough that I didn't need to run Fluxbox, but I couldn't really do GNOME. So I ended up liking XFCE because at the time I was using a lot of GTK programs. And uh, if you take a look here, they kind of have a um, a uh, similar uh, menu to the one in um, Cinnamon and the one in Mate, where everything is organized by categories. Again, um, plus and minuses. And also you could just type here. So you could type Firefox and there's Firefox at the top. You hit enter and it would go. Um, Interestingly, they've gone with transmission as opposed to deluge for their BitTorrent client. It's I, I'd be very interested if I could find out why it is that they change those um, as they go to different desktops, um, because it's the same people packaging it, but um, they've packaged it differently depending on the desktop. Um, and there's nothing specific about um, transmission that makes it more suited to um, XFC, except maybe it's a little more lightweight. Now, XFC is often um, classed as a lightweight desktop, but it's not really that lightweight. Um, in fact, they themselves often say, we don't know why people call them lightweight. Um, well, people have often said, they've often said to people, we don't know why people call us lightweight. There's, we're not really lightweight at all. Um, overall, it looks like they've chosen a really good um, set of programs as they have everywhere uh, where we've taken a look at this. Um, Interestingly, they don't have the bottom menu that that's kind of goes back to C, um, D, CDE, I think, um, back in um, the old Unix days. But they did retain over here where you click and you can access your applications that way. Um, so um, back when I was um, launching stuff from the menu a lot before I learned the names of the programs, I found this to be really, really convenient and a nice kind of bridge between something like a uh, flux box or open box where you can right click for the menu and um, something like GNOME or KDE where your menus appear. And of course, you can always hit Alt F2 and you can do it that way, Firefox, just like that. Um, and uh, now that I've launched Yum Extender, it tells me there's updates. As soon as I close it, it doesn't. So it looks like, uh, that I would say that's the one knock I have against all the, um, all of the uh, Corora distro, um, distro packages is that except for KDE, um, none of them tell you that there are um, updates that need to be put in. You have to figure it out on your own. And that's kind of annoying. Um, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, one thing I do like about uh, Yum Extender is that it kind of gives you a little summary of what it is you're updating. But for the most part, if you have it in there, you probably put it in there on your own. That's not 100% true. Um, you know, this is a uh, virgin install, and so um, I didn't pick Audacious, they happen to pick Audacious, um, and so on and so forth. But, um, you know, uh, horses for courses, as they say. Um, so there you go, that concludes all the um, different Corroras. I have to say that um, overall, I like the changes they make. Um, you know, these little things, they're nice nice little changes that kind of give you that little, little something extra, while at the same time, um, keeping it it's close enough to Fedora that if anything were to go wrong, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to just jump back to Fedora if Corora decided to go away or rebase themselves. Um, they were originally a uh, Gen 2 distro, so it's not like they've never rebased themselves before in the past. Um, so I know this is uh, kind of just looking at, I mean, the whole point when I went into this was to take a look at 
the way that different um, child distros customize the parent distros. So it hasn't been a very in-depth review. Um, there are other people that do stuff like that. I used to do that, but uh, I find it's hard to do an in-depth review without it taking forever. Um, and then, hmm. and then uh, you can end up with uh, with issues. Now that's interesting that it had a dependency solving error. Let me check here. Ooh, I do like that they made it. Um, by default, they made it a translucent um, translucent terminal. I know that those are kind of pointless, but uh, still fun to uh, to do to see and. Um, you know, if you're gonna make a nice desktop background, isn't it nice to be able to see it? Um, and so I have always liked uh, terminals when they're trans translucent, or uh, yeah, translucent is the right word because transparent would be completely transparent. And here we have a it's dark, a darkened background. Um, so uh, DNF doesn't usually do the depth solving until after it's downloaded. It says it's gonna take three minutes. I'm not gonna make you guys wait three minutes. Um, if it doesn't. Um, do the dependency resolution. I'll come back to the video. Um, if the video ends here, um, you can assume that um, it solved the dependencies as it should. And if it did, then I would say, ooh, one thing I noticed there, so it has libraw, which is nice if you're working with raw files. I like that. Um, actually, let me take a look just out of curiosity's sake, which, what they happen to have for um, for that. Oh, dark table. Okay. So I'm not uh, I don't use Darktable because I kind of purposely went away from the Lightroom model. But if you want something that looks and behaves almost exactly like Lightroom, but um, is free as in speech as well as free as in beer, then Darktable is a pretty good choice. Um, but yeah, so um, it'll be kind of disturbing if Yumix was not able to do the depth solving, but DNF can. Um, but you know, sometimes there are bugs in programs, and maybe among the things being updated here is Yumix, and the updated version of Yumix would be able to do the depth solving correctly. Um, so anyway, I hope this has been informative. I hope it's kind of helped you take a look at the different desktops. Now, um, one final thing. Um, when I was looking through Reddit um, last week, someone was saying that they installed Ubuntu and they didn't like Unity and they were thinking, okay, so what do I need to install? Should I go to Fedora or OpenSUSE or something else? The great thing about Linux is you're not stuck with the desktop that you chose when you first installed. So you can always say, I don't like FCE. You don't have to do a wipe and reinstall with Corora GNOME or Corora KDE. You can just install the packages and then at the part where you saw me type in my password at the beginning, you would just pick uh, which of the desktop backgrounds you want you know do you want a gnome desktop do you want a kde desktop xfce now it does um take up more space on your hard drive and um it does mean that when you do upgrades that it takes longer but other than that that's it there's no problem um my last install on my main computer i had every single window manager and every desktop environment that existed uh, when i would click on that Thing to pick which one I wanted there was it was like 17 deep and I never had any conflicts or any issues or any problems with that so um, hopefully this is helpful to help you pick the one you want so that if you are installing on something with a smaller hard drive you don't have to um, install and then um, feel like you made the wrong choice but if not feel free to always add to it and um, there's no reason why that wouldn't work so again um, if, if this works correctly without any issues um, this will be the end if not I'll come back and do a quick post script and let you know that uh, even DNF was not able to solve the dependencies. All right, thanks for watching. See you later.